My name is Jay Shear. Last year, I started a nonprofit. The nonprofit is called the Reclamation Society. What we believe is that if you talk about issues that are relevant to our culture, that those issues will reveal truth. Ben Anklum was our director. Hello. Um, he also uh, co-wrote the script with me. Uh, super fun to work with him. Uh, super high quality that he brings to the table, which is really, really fun. Um, and so he's, he and I are going to just have a conversation with you guys. How do you feel at the end of this film? Yeah. <laughs> you want to watch more? I like that answer. Yeah, that's a good answer. Like part, you know? Yeah. How else? Like, how does that sit with you? Do you find it hopeful? Who do you feel for? Right? Like, whose side are you on? Yeah. Well, I'm on, what's her name? The one that was turning, like, going towards the dark side. I feel for her. And I understand why she's going towards that side. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, but it's challenging, right? It's challenging, like, because you know inherently that this is somebody who's been bullied, she's experienced verbal abuse, and she's basically going down um, a path that is not healthy for her to go down, right? We know that. We understand why she's going there, but we also understand, like, oh, how is, why did this happen? Like, how did this happen? Um, so we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this story. We're going to talk a little bit about behind the scenes, how it came all about. Um, I'm going to start by saying that uh, when we started the Reclamation Society, I really wanted to do a Star Wars fan film for, for a couple of reasons. One, I knew that it would get us attention, right? Because people inherently want to watch Star Wars. <laughs> so if you do a Star Wars fan film, people will, will uh, want to be a part of that. The other thing was, too, every single Star Wars fan film I had ever seen was basically just an extended lightsaber fight, right? So it was like, hey, you have a lightsaber, I have a lightsaber, like, <laughs> fight. And I wanted to say something more using the Star Wars universe. I wanted to explore something deeper. So this is how it started to get crazy. This is before Ben was involved. In late January of 2016, I was already working on scripts. I had only heard that they were going to do a fan and film contest. That's all I had heard. I didn't know what it was gonna be like. They didn't give any instructions. They didn't give any deadlines, anything. Well, uh, so I didn't bring on a team. So Ben wasn't even a part of it yet. Didn't bring on any other producers either. It was just myself and my co-founder thinking about doing a Star Wars film. And uh, in February, like February 2nd or 5th or something like that, they announced a March, end of March deadline. I believe it was end of March. Maybe it could have been April. I think it was, I think it was April. Yeah, it might have been April. But I was like, oh, I have two months. If I want to be a part of this contest, literally like, I don't know how we're going to do this. So we immediately met with, I say immediately, like three weeks later. Um, oh, and they also said that it couldn't be, it had to be five minutes long, tops. Now I've been writing 10 minute scripts. <laughs> so I'm like, all those ideas are <laughs> out the door, like forget it. So I uh, met with some producers. We had a script in hand, a first draft of a script. Well, by then, by then it was the fifth draft of the script. And we said, we want to do an anti-bullying fan film. Um, and we brought in these people, we brought in a couple uh, friends, a friend of mine, uh, the lead actress, Sky, the one who turns to the dark side at the end, um, Marianne Holland, uh, and her husband. They said, like, will you guys be producers with us, and will you help us find a team to do, to do this? And uh, they said, we should probably work with Lucas Colombo and his team, Moy Films. Am I pronouncing that right? Moai? Moai Films. Um, and so we said, okay, let's have a conversation with them. So we, we had in mind that we did not want, I did not want to do a cheesy one either, because the, the story gets lost immediately if it's cheesy. You have to bring a certain level of quality or else you won't, you won't engage people, right? And you know that if you mess it up, you are going to hear about it, right? Um, there, are, there are videos on, on YouTube that have way more views than we have that are just like the comments are just hammering them. Like, what did you do? You did this wrong. You did that wrong. So I knew we wanted a story. Um, we really wanted a high quality film. So we brought in uh, Moai Films. And that's when Lucas said, I've got a guy, Ben, huge Star Wars fan, as big as you guys, <laughs> which is sometimes hard to find, if I'm being honest. Um, and so we brought in Ben. So um, the, the, at this point, the story, just right before I, before I uh, have Ben talk about it a little bit, about what his experience coming on board, the story came from an experience um, that my family had with some uh, bullying situation with another family member. And in this case, we were the ones being bullied. So it was on my heart to be able to say like, wow, I'm getting so angry about this, right? And I put up here, with the, the famous line, right? Like fear is the fear is the path to the dark side because fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. 
And if, and if I know that's the, my character journey, because I'm going through that myself, right, as I'm bullied, I'm going through that same journey, uh, I'd like to write about this and see, like, showcase why this is, why this is the case. So when Moai Films was on board, and I was super stoked because they were on board from the beginning, and they're, they're real. Lucas is real. Um, a reel is just like the film that he's done in the past is amazing. So I, I watched this reel and I'm like, Whoa, this is ridiculous. Like if we can, if this guy wants to work with us, then we're, we're good to go. So then at that point he goes, can Ben look at the script and help like massage the script? Uh, he liked the script. He liked the story. It's just a matter of like massaging it. And so that's when Ben came on. So can you talk about your desire to work with us and a little bit about massaging the script with us? Yeah. Um, I think it was like, two weeks to the day before we shot. <laughs> it was, it was uh, crazy. They brought me on. And um, got the script. Actually, I don't really remember how it used to be because the final product's like so imprinted. And, right. right. Um, but I do remember that like after my first pass at it, um, the element of bullying was kind of gone. Um, I do remember that part. I and mean, there was a, because at the time it wasn't really clear to me like what was happening. So I had this like more of an arc for the bully character to be kind of nice at the beginning and then kind of like at the kind of do a little bit of bullying like in the middle like kind of more like teasing and then you're like well it's a, it's a commentary on bullying essentially right. on on people pushing each other to fear and anger right and so from there we kind of worked on the scripts and got it to where it was which was and it was tough to get in that five minutes I mean really <laughs> it, was it wasn't even it was like a six page script and we're like oh we can make it five minutes so this is what <laughs> that's happened right, that's right because um, it's I mean it's so condensed like there's so many like we show them at a gravesite with the father. We lay that backstory in there, just like boom, boom, boom. Have a nice meat chunk in the middle where they build their relationship in the tent and they talk about that. That's kind of where we, we flesh it all out and then boom, 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 lightsaber, you know. Right, right. So it's it's a lot that's going on in that five minutes. There's a ton that's going on in the five minutes. Um, and, and like what Ben was talking about is too, whenever you do a script, right, generally speaking, the number of pages of your script equals the number of minutes of your film. So we knew it had to be under five minutes. We had a six page script and we're like, how do you cut anything out of this script? Um, and ultimately we ended up condensing a bunch of stuff. Ben had this amazing idea. Um, the whole opening sequence, which is done with the voiceover, and then we get kind of this interaction with the two of them kind of fighting and you see, you start to see her bullying, right? Because you see, you see her push her down and things like that. Um, ben came up with that sequence in the beginning, which was phenomenal entry into the rest of where we were going. And I'm a very, um, big proponent of visual writing so when that came about i was i was like this is amazing because it's visual right i know that there's a voiceover but that's just because it's so condensed if we if we could have done it without the voiceover we'd do it without the voiceover too um so that was awesome and talk talk to me about a little bit about your uh being a star wars fan oh man uh star wars i mean i grew up on star i had this like crazy like star wars toy collection i was a kid and like you know i was a Jedi for Halloween more times than I can count. So when you grow up with it like that, it's just kind of like integrated. Like I can quote the movies. Like I watched, you know, before Rogue One, I went and watched all of them again, just like, you know, just to be prepared, yeah. you know. So <laughs> right. it's, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just like saturated into my pop culture reference. Tool. Totally. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you, and I'm going to ask you guys this too, so you can keep in mind. Um, what, what are your like top three characters from Star Wars? Oh, like in the whole saga? The whole, the whole saga. Oh. Dang. Uh, that's, that's on the spot. I did not prepare for this. Yeah. I think Obi-Wan Kenobi is like, mm. def- Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda are like the ones who punch for me. I think like Obi-Wan being this, you know, wise guy who's willing to like sacrifice himself and, uh, you know, but he's seen some stuff. He, he was a young apprentice at one time and we've right. seen him do that part. And then uh, Yoda, Yoda's just, he was my favorite as a kid because I thought he was hilarious when he was putting <laughs> on the facade of like being this like derpy little annoying creature and then <laughs> they turned into like a wise Jedi and I didn't really get that till I watched it older like what was really happening but right. so he's my favorite for that reason and then number three whoa I don't know that's tough that's a tough I have to go with Luke oh nice I have to go with Luke's arc from, from the first three movies like the whiny kid at the beginning to like the the all black reserved grappling with the dark side at the end yeah. yeah, yeah, and a quiet confidence the whole yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, you go to face your father in battle. Yeah. Right, go ahead. I was gonna say like his his isn't like any one movie. Like Yoda is just like Empire Strikes Back Yoda, but Luke is because of like the three movies combined. Why he's one of my yeah, favorites. right, right, yeah. right, right. 
You got you got to have a lot of wisdom in your characters. Yeah. You like to have a lot of wisdom. Yeah. Um, what are your guys' favorite characters? Just throw out some. Just ping around. Yeah. Darth Vader, hands down. <laughs> Darth Vader, there it yeah. is. Classic. To me, in my opinion, he's the strongest. Got the best uh, force power, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Show, yeah, for sure. Because nobody can like break out of that. Yeah. Have you all seen Rogue One? Yeah. So there's this, the, the scene with Darth Vader in Rogue One at the oh, end man. is like oh, my man. favorite Star Wars scene of all time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's so good. What are some other favorite characters? I'd probably say Kylo Ren because like it's a conflict we've never seen before. Yeah. I'm a bad guy like swaying to the right side and a conflict of having to ultimately defeat his father to fully become Darth Vader. Yeah, totally. Totally. You can't put you guys yeah. together. <laughs> like Darth Vader and Kylo, we're in big trouble. Yeah. What else? Who else? Good. Kylo's good. Um, Leia. Leia, of course. Yeah, because it's empowering to see such a strong female lead. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. She's like it was the typical story where she's the damsel in distress. But once they, once Han and Luke get to her, she takes over. It's yep. like I'm getting us out of here, <laughs> and they're following her. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's awesome. What else? Anybody else? Yeah. I really, love, I really loved Andor in uh, in Rogue One. Just uh, like, we don't know a whole lot of his character, but what I did see, like just like the complex, like he was supposed to like kill Jim's father, but he didn't. He, yeah. Like, heart, so I, I really love uh, Andor. Especially. Yeah. And he and he kills someone in the beginning of the film too. Yeah. He's like, yeah. oh my gosh, this dude will do anything. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. intense. Oh, I liked the uh, Force Whitaker's character in that movie. Oh, so yeah. Like I was, <laughs> I was so sad he died. I was like. I need more of that. I need more. Oh, the Bugatti! Like, I, need, I need that, you know? On this day. Yeah. Um, who else? Anybody else? I'd say Han Solo. Han Solo? Yeah. yeah. My top three are Han Solo, Boba Fett, and Rey. Boba Fett. And Boba Fett's like, there's Boba a big, Fett. there's controversy about Boba Fett because Boba Fett doesn't really do anything yeah. in <laughs> any of the films. Uh, but I still, the, from the character design standpoint, like, uh, I'm trying to think of an acceptable way to say this at APU. He, uh, he's, he's very much um, a guy you do not want to mess with. Yeah. Right? Like, he, yeah. That, and that's portrayed throughout. He's proof that mystery is cool. Exactly. Because we don't know anything about him. He doesn't even say anything in, like, the second movie, I don't think. Maybe, like, one line, two lines. <laughs> exactly. And he just has the most badass outfit, and, like, and people know who he is. Yep. Because it's the mystery that, like, makes him cool. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. We were right, talking so, about doing a, a movie of him, and I was like, that will ruin it. Like, yeah. we need it. It will ruin There'll be no more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so I'm going to keep going because um, we're going to run out of time before we're able to go, every, to go through everything. Um, one thing that I was really happy about with the crew that we brought on board was that um, they were all passionate about Star Wars. Like, every single person. And granted, they kind of had to be because we don't have... Uh, deep pockets <laughs> so if you're gonna be a part of our, our, our film it was a one-day shoot got everybody together um, and it was insane um, we almost ran out of time because we were like four hours behind at some point or something like that yeah. it was it was ridiculous um, but that was really really cool fantastic crew from from everybody from the production assistants um, to uh, Lucas as our DP was amazing Ben was Ben was actually uh, a phenomenal director for a couple reasons. One, he understood the concept. So like he said, like he had removed some of the bullying in the beginning, but after a conversation, like it's, it's a total pain to work with people who want to take over your work. It's just a pain, right? Like, and if you ever work in a creative sort of anything, <laughs> you will find people who basically are like, oh yeah, that's cool, this is better, <laughs> right? And they just take it over. Ben was not like that. Ben was like, I want to collaborate with you. I want to, I want to create a story that we all are on the same page about. And that's super refreshing because you don't get a lot of that in the industry. I haven't experienced a lot of that. Yeah. I don't have you. Yeah. People are very protective of their, yes. their scripts are like their babies. and like, don't touch my baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So hopefully I wasn't too much. No, like no, that. no. no. <laughs> um, but everybody had the same goal of creating a really... Um, professional looking film something beyond the normal fan film right oh by the way that's me and my co-founder hanging out on the set um the locations were interesting because uh <laughs> we had several of them and um and finding a location was really really difficult because you can imagine like where are you going to find something that something looks like star wars right like if you're not building it or like the other uh, fan film that ben worked on was on a sound stage for the most part right like yeah. so you had um, a half set and half. yeah okay so um so ben and i went out scouting one day we found this super cool park um so can you talk to, about the locations a little bit yeah and i'll that, go through i'll go through pictures of them too we shot in, we shot in riverside county they're very 
you know, friendly with their parks and, and they have a lot of uh, city owned property that they encourage filmmaking at. And so we, we went and looked there and found this awesome park. And we found that spot right there um, with the dead tree. And that grass was just so cool looking. And uh, so we got our permit and we, we went and scouted out some specifics and we went and started shooting there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell the story of getting kicked out. <laughs> do so, it. So, yeah, we, do uh, it. so we were shooting there and then uh, some park rangers come up and they, they were not happy. Actually, at first I think it was a lady that came oh, really? up and uh, was not happy. Apparently the grass, we shot the whole fight sequence on. We shot all the way up until the red lightsaber comes out right there. Um, apparently it's an endangered species right there in that little circle. <laughs> <laughs> and we were trampling all over it and they were not happy. And so, the, but she left and some park rangers came back and they were very like understanding like, hey, we can't have you shoot here anymore um, unless you shot right on the path. But the path looks very parky. So we, we had to leave and he told us actually, he actually loaded our stuff into the park ranger vehicles and took us to an empty lot that was able to double uh, as so when you see the red lightsaber sequence we're actually in a whole nother is that it right? yeah this is yeah. the other this so is the other location that's a whole nother that's someone's like backyard farm <laughs> property that's not <laughs> even in the park so the grass is actually different um, but it, it I wasn't worried about it I knew we could mesh it together because we were shooting so tight um, during the time we made the switch and we shot that part almost entirely in sequence so I knew it could flip pretty easily um, but yeah it was kind of it was a stressful like alright we're moving we're packing up it was crazy. So, so as a, as a writer producer, right? Like, I actually don't even like being on set personally because um, I find the whole process like I'm I'm sort of an activator. Let's like move. Let's do stuff. But I want it to be really like Ben does, perfect. So it's, I'm in this personal conflict of like I want to go faster, but I, you know, so I so I don't like being on set at all, and I like leaving it to the professionals to go ahead and take that part of it. So as a producer, we were talking about it, and I was like, oh, I'm so anxious about filming in this park because we knew that there was a percentage, there was a, some percentage chance we would get kicked out. The, the rules are, they're ambiguous. You feel like they're like, shoot on the trails. You feel like it's like, shoot on the trails, like, right? Like, like wink, wink, like, don't worry about it. Um, and so we took the risk anyways. And I, and I mainly was relying on Ben at that point because I'm like, I know that it's gonna look better and Ben knows what he's talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, we can do that. Um, so then when we, we got kicked out, but fortunately, um, since Ben and Lucas are good guys, they talked to the Rangers, made sure that they could find another location. And, and the reason they don't allow you to film in places like that um, is that the Rangers told us that they'll have like porn films come through and right. film there, like graffiti stuff yeah. and like... So people get their permit and then they, they lie about what they're doing and they will yeah. shoot a porno or something. Exactly. Yeah. So we were like, that, we, we get it, right? Like that's not cool, that's not acceptable. And so we just we, we moved, and so in the middle of the film, uh, did you, any of you guys realize that the location shifted? Oh yeah. So in the middle of the film, we basically new location. It's all new location. So um, and if I get a chance to show it again, we may run out of time. But if I get a chance to show it again, just look for that location switch. It is a, it is at the part where she goes for the red lightsaber after her first lightsaber is destroyed. Uh, that's where the location switch is. You want to talk a little bit about? Oh, that's a cool photo. Yeah. Um, the tent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so the tent was the last scene of the day that we shot. Um, we, uh, David, the guy that did the uh, production design, it like super, super awesome guy. Like he kind of um, came up. I told him we were talking about we want a cave. We were it was something like rural and rustic, and he kind of came up with these. Like I want to do something that's kind of like this, and he gave me some concept photos that were pretty close to that. And I was like, that's great. And so we were trying to find a place to do it, like use the side of the building or something. And uh, he was like, I'll just hold up, do some clothing, clotheslines. This was at your aunt's house. Yeah, so my aunt's house. Backyard. <laughs> um, so we went to the backyard and, and we actually incorporated, you can see the trees on the inside and stuff. So he was trying to figure out a way stuff. I was, just, I was like, put all the trees in there because that looks super cool. Um, so we kept the trees inside and just hung up stuff. There's like, there's a little lantern on the table at cylinder that's actually in my room right now and there's, there's, there's it's just a bunch of clock that's a that's a little grill there um the fire coming out of it so it's, it's kind of like a mix of like old technology with like uh just like rural sort of like eastern looking like with the bamboo and the, the furs and stuff so which is a perfect segue because i wanted to talk about the design so another thing that so again i come from a writing background storytelling background and um wanted to be a producer <coughs> as, on this particular film and so when you write a script, you do try to think of like what's gonna come up as a 
challenge to shoot, right? So in the script, there was like long grass and stuff like that. I'm like, we can find long grass. <laughs> it was really hard to find long grass, by the oh, way. That's the photo David took. That's the photo, yeah. He was like, I'm, I'm going to make it look like that. I was exactly. Like, oh, all right. And he did. Yeah. But, but one of the things that happens is that you don't write into the script. You don't write in like they're wearing a blue jacket. I mean, if it's, if it's essential to the script, you might write that, right? But you are reliant upon your production design team to come up with stuff that is going to be legit from a Star Wars perspective, right? And so one of the things I'm going to have Ben do is walk us through some of the original concepts that were, that were supplied to our makeup artists and our um, design team. Uh, okay, well, I'll start with makeup. Um, okay, let me, let me skip to the makeup. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, we had those three characters. I remember um, in the original script, I don't think they were defined as, like, what species they were. They were no, they were, all they were human. not. That's correct. They're actually, they're all humans. Yeah. Um, and so I remember thinking, like, well, I was trying to up the production value to make it, like, more, seem like it was more expensive than it yeah. really was. <laughs> and so um, the idea of making Sky half-breed, was that in the original? I don't think that was. That was not. Uh, it was not in the original. Not. So we, we, not only like was she, she was like, going to be a half sister, right? But she wasn't going to be half breed, yeah. Right. So not only was she like half Sith, she was also half human. Yes. Um, and so the makeup artist I kind of gave her freedom on that. I I knew I wanted pointy ears, like something subtle. Pointy ears and eyes. We gave her the context, and it's something subtle, so she was more human than not. Yeah. Um, she has the pink eyes. Yeah. And they did those like raised lines on her face. That was kind of like the makeup artist design. We did one. They did a test shoot with it, and it looked good. Um, so that that was her. And then Kuthar, I thought it would be really cool. Like, let's get a Darth Maul in there. Unfortunately, we didn't have the uh, luxury like we did with Sky of like doing a test shoot with the actor beforehand. Um, so everything was just done on the set at the time. And there was we shot everything one day. There was no time to make changes. So it's like, that's how it is. Let's do it. So we actually did some digital makeup over top of him in post production, kind of smoothed it out. Um, and it turned out good. Um, I like how he looks with his hood on a lot more. I think that's just more cool and I would have kept his hood on the whole time it's just a little minor thing but like right, I just right. think that looks so great with the hood the whole look and uh, it does there's more continuity with the hood yeah and the costumes um, man we had a really tight budget for costumes and they look good yeah especially if you saw like what we were working with and uh, they were just they look great and I remember we did a fight rehearsal one day uh, the week before we, we shot and that was when I met Maddie the bully character and she is a CrossFit bodybuilder. Maddie's on the far gymnast, right over there. On the yeah. far right. And so we saw her, well, I saw her like doing the fight choreography with, uh, um, they had, we had a guy who was helping with the fight choreography and everything. I, I saw her and she was just ripped. She was shredded. I was like, all right, all her out. I just, my only note for wardrobe was like, her outfits needed to be sleeveless to show off her guns. Like, <laughs> and so, yeah. with the exception of the tent scene, her all her scenes are sleeveless. Yeah. 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 And, uh, one of the cool things, so I had this experience where I'm on set and they're doing their makeup um, and I'm waiting for them to get to the set. We're doing just prep work. And you don't know. You literally don't know what it's going to end up looking like. You see the racks of clothes and stuff like that. You don't know what they're going to end up wearing. You don't know, like, you know. So so I'm, I'm standing there waiting for the actors to show up. Um, ben and Lucas are getting the shots all ready. They're getting the cameras all ready. And uh, I see uh, Marianne start walking up and then I see um, Maddie start walking up after her and I'm like whoa those costumes are legit but see you don't know till that last minute and then you go oh, yeah I guess that is, this might work out I was very impressed with the costumes yeah yeah um, so uh, as you as you pointed out Kuthar is a Zabrak so different species a little bit than Dar Darth Maul because Darth Maul is um, I might get this wrong Dathomirian Dathomirian you're going deep into Star Wars oh stuff. man I just I gotta prove I gotta <laughs> prove that I'm a fan um, and so then hence you see the skin tone differences so right, so the, in the two species, the one thing I will say is that if I was ever to be in front of anybody that really wanted to challenge me, and no one has challenged me on this yet, um, I would say that he's probably half human, half Zabrak, because I don't think I've not seen a Zabrak with a beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's one thing that I would say is uh, if I get, if I really got cornered, I would say that. Um, so I'm going to go back to, uh, to to this. These are just some of the just, this is some of the concept art that was that. Um, we shared with one another mm -hmm. um, in order to get the designs down. We actually, everybody kind of pitched in a little bit, like, do, we, do you have anything at home that kind of looks like this? And everybody kind of brought stuff and just gave it to the production designer, and he dressed it with, like, like bamboo. Like, like Lucas brought, like, a wooden flute. I brought some bamboo. Like, yeah. people brought furs. Like, it was just kind of all just given to him, and he dressed it. We wanted to have a feel for rural, countryside, 
type feel. Because we knew we couldn't, we were going to film in a spaceport, right? We didn't have the budget for doing that. We couldn't build anything. And if you try and you, and you don't get there, you look really bad, right? Um, and there's a lot of fan films that try. Um, now, granted, on your other fan film that you worked on, uh, Han, it's called Han Solo. A Smuggler's Trade. A Smuggler's Trade. Yeah. Um, I recommend go watching that one. That had really high production value. They were able to get some really cool set design in that yeah. one. So, but we were trying to go for more of like a, and this was, again, this was more of a Ben influence, sort of like a, like a Bedouin type nomadic tribe type people. Yeah. Um, I which, wanted a cave. That's what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> that been, that yeah. Been I got to credit David for that. That was his, that was his idea. That was fantastic. Um, and then you just see this, this is the, this is the, what actually made it into the movie. So the, the, you know, concept art here, uh, this is what actually made it into the film. Very, very similar. It was really, really awesome how it turned out. That was the character design. So let's talk a little bit about some of the mistakes that we made. <laughs> so what are some of the biggest mistakes you remember? Uh, man. I remember the lightsabers breaking on the day. <laughs> yes. Just from like getting take after take, taking the hits. So we had one dowels in the center that were actually colored, coordinated to what they were, uh, the CGI was. And uh, yeah, those things were snapping. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had, I think we had four wooden dowels. A red one, two blue ones, and a green one. And we broke one of the blue ones within, because Maddie, the CrossFitter, is hitting <laughs> really hard. Yeah, she's strong. Yeah, she's super strong. And so she, uh, uh, she breaks one of, the, one of the dowels in like, and there's actually a, we actually have a photo um, from, a screen, from a screen grab, from a frame grab, of her like laughing because Marianne's standing there with this like broken lightsaber. And uh, that was very frightening. We were like, guys, guys, you got, you can't, we lose one more of these and we're like done filming for the day. Like that's not good. So that was a big deal. The other big deal that I remember is we, um, you'll notice that Marianne's character, Sky, walks up um, to the, we, we filmed the outside shots first. So she walks up to um, Kel, Mar uh, Maddie's character, with a satchel. And she takes her lightsaber that she's built out of the satchel, right? Well, in the tent scene, you'll notice she reaches for her lightsaber. That's her mom's lightsaber, not the one that she built, right? Because she built the blue one. Her mom's got the red one. She reaches for the red one. Well, the original script called for the satchel, her to just reach for the satchel. So we didn't know that there was a lightsaber in the satchel necessarily until it's revealed later on that there was another saber in the satchel. The problem was we lost the satchel in the field. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so on the fly, we had to be like, how are we going to yeah. foreshadow the fact that she's going to have a red lightsaber? Oh, whose satchel is that? There's a satchel I don't know. There's a, <laughs> there's a satchel in Temecula, somewhere. yeah, somewhere. Oh, yeah, we lost our key prop. That's right. Oh, that was, so that was, but we came up with it. We, we came up with a fix where, well, let's just have the lightsaber there, which actually I think ends up working better i think so too I yeah think it, i think it was a happy accident exactly with the exception of whoever satchel we lost yeah yeah exactly do you guys have any questions at this point we've got about five minutes left i won't show the film again just for time and if you guys want to have further conversations um i can't think of any that's a mistake i can't think of any mistakes off the top of my head the only There's, other one i had in there i mean we got kicked out got kicked out yeah of course <laughs> Uh, that's not necessarily a mistake so much. Was, I, there's so. like little details I would change. Like actually, if you notice, like Kuthar is a Jedi, but he has, he doesn't have the classic Jedi belt. His uh. saber hand. There's like little things like that. I'm like, nah, but it's, <laughs> it doesn't make or break. It's not like the right. satchel getting lost. <laughs> right, exactly. The only other one I had was we were running short on time. That's not necessarily a mistake either. And actually, it's amazing what you can do when you're forced to do something that you wouldn't necessarily have done. So, as the sun is setting. We wanted to get that opening shot, right? Remember that opening shot? We wanted to get that shot. So basically, we're, my, my cousin, who was our um, script supervisor, is sitting there and she's like, guys, the sun's setting, let's move, let's move. No, she was awesome. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah. And so, so Ben's like, all right, we gotta shoot this film, the sun's setting, and they're just running and gunning. Like, so now, now this shot, now this shot, now the grave scene, boom, 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 yeah. boom. We got probably how many shots yeah. in like an hour? That, that was our plan the whole time to run and gun that, but it was, there was less light than Intended. So, yeah. But it actually worked out. Like the less light for like the graveyard stuff actually played really well. Yeah, yeah. One, one of the coolest things that happened too is, that, and I'll just talk about this as as being one of the um, one of the results, uh, is that in my mind, I think one of the best visual filmmakers. He has some storytelling problems, 
but I think he's amazing from a visual standpoint, is Zack Snyder. I think his visuals are just fantastic. Yeah. And he, um, and one of the things I was thinking in my head was, that's the style of film that I would like to make. And there was this one moment when um, Ben and Lucas got back to us and we were like, we were watching the trailer for Man of Steel, and we love it, and we want to use that, that technique. Yeah. And I like, it's one of my favorite trailers of all time. Oh, it's, it's amazing. better than the movie. <laughs> it's better than the movie. And, I, and once, once they said that, I'm like, oh, we're all on the same page. Like, this is what we want to do. This is going to be... We're going to at least try. And this is why, one of the things I told Ben, too, and I want to get your reaction to our final product. But one of the things I told Ben afterwards was that I said, any problems with this film go all the way back to the script. And that's super rare. Because I just heard another filmmaker talk about this, actually. The movie you write, the movie you shoot, and the movie you edit are three different films, oftentimes. Yeah. This film, I, would, I was like, no, people got the vision from the very beginning, and it's, and it's the same film. We didn't have a lot of time to deviate. I mean, we, yeah, it's true. it was like two weeks we started pre-production, we shot it in one day, and then two weeks we sent it to Star Wars contest. That's right, we sent it to Star Wars. And we didn't even, we didn't even get in the top, whatever it was, five or whatever. Yeah, I don't, yeah, we didn't make it into the... There's lots of controversy. I still think, yeah, yeah I still yeah. think we were... Uh, unknown why. Unknown why. But I also said, yeah. What was your guys' budget for this? So I've been asked not to reveal the budget oh. by the filmmakers. I'll just, I'll just say this. It was a, we shot it for about, I don't know, probably a third of what it should have cost. Yeah. And that's mostly because the people involved were passionate, were passionate about it. Yeah. So um, a film like this, I'll say that I'll say I'll believe it a little bit more ambiguous. A film like this, I would say, you're budgeting like 21 to 40k for it. Yeah, I would say 20. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we, I, w I would like to do a sequel. There's a lot of demand for a sequel. If you go on our YouTube, one of the things I'm really, really um, one of the things that's been really rewarding for me. We have about 25,000 views, which is not what some of them get. Some of them are getting millions. Like your other one that you worked on, yeah, is like. Almost at a million views. Yeah, yeah. but they had some celebrities. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. had some celebrities that were able to promote it, but um, it will hit it soon, uh, and that's a cool milestone. But one of the cool things for me is that the feedback we get on YouTube is like overwhelmingly positive. And if I go search and look at other videos, even videos that get a million, yeah, tons of negative stuff that yeah. people don't like. So, yeah, yeah it's. Uh I, did you filter those comments on YouTube? Because they were like resoundingly positive. I, I, the only thing I've taken out is if somebody was over the top inappropriate. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's the only time. If somebody disagrees and says they don't like it, yeah. I leave it. Yeah. But if there was a couple times when uh, somebody called the actresses. Got some gross trolls on there. Yeah, yeah. They were very inappropriate with what their comments were. And I was like, screw this. I'm taking this out. But yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I'm like, yeah, if you want to criticize the film, go for it. I don't mind. I'd rather have a discussion, but if you're just going to be completely inappropriate, then I'm going to take your comment yeah, off, right? That's fine. Uh, any thought? Any last minute thoughts about what we ended up with? Um, I was very happy. I love telling people because people that work in the industry that we shot that one day, they're like, "Oh wow, that that alone is impressive." So that's that's my favorite tidbit. Like, we shot it in one day, yeah. and it's good. <laughs> that's good for that's especially awesome. that. Yeah, yeah, and it's it turned out like you said, it is what we imagined it's what we imagined concept yeah. and so I'm very proud of it yeah. very proud of it yeah me too so though I'm going to leave you guys with this just because we're running out of time and I don't want to take you guys over um, on your uh, day off of classes um, but there are there are a couple things we're, we're all about digging deeper questioning everything and discovering the truth so I want to leave you with um, several questions that you can think about and if you go back and watch the film on YouTube or whatever just search for Star Wars Rivals I do want to say just have you ponder these questions. One, how do we address verbal abuse and bullying in, in the communities that we're a part of, right? You can see, I think we've seen it, I've seen it a lot recently actually, more than I'd like to. And um, what does that look like and how do we deal with it? And how do, we, how do we deal with both the bullies who are hurt people and the people that they're hurting? Um, the second question I would invite you guys to consider is, um, what should you do when you feel fear or you're being bullied, right? These are the kind of questions that I think lead us back to Jesus Christ. Because I have to have compassion for the bully, and I have to understand where they're coming from, even if their behavior is unacceptable. But I also have a call to help those who are being bullied. So there's a little bit of a dynamic there. Um, that's my answer. You guys should come up with your own answers. Um, the third one is, what is your identity? Because that's if your identity, question. yeah. It's a great question. If your identity is off and you're being bullied, you will turn to the dark side. Yeah. 
It's a, I've been thinking about that a lot this past week, actually, like strength and character. Like, you know, if you, relying on your own strength, you it, you become weak a lot of times, and, and you're not the person you wanted to be, or you're not the person you are in times of tribulation. And uh, but if your identity is in Christ, you get your you can keep your character before and after your and in the middle of your tribulation. And it's yeah, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot this week. I think that's a great question. What is your identity? Yeah, yeah. Amen to that. Oh, I have a fun fact. Yeah. Um, the voice of Sky's mother, that's like whispering oh, yeah. to her, like, <laughs> like do it. Da, da. Um, that's actually my mother. So she's a voiceover <laughs> artist, and so I've, I've had her do something for me before in the past, and so I just asked her to do it, and she, I was like, I want a uh, Cape Blanchett, kind of a Lord of the Rings sort of thing going on. And she gave me one, and then I gave her one note, she gave it back to me, it was boom, boom, really easy. Yeah. It was awesome. It was great. Yeah. That's yeah. one of my favorite parts. Voice, yeah, so yeah. She was really good. She did great. Yeah, we're gonna have so to. She was so pumped to do it because she's like our whole family, like Star Wars nerds. So <laughs> yeah, so she was very excited for that. That's awesome. Yeah. Next, when the sequel, we're gonna have to have her actually play like a role. <laughs> yeah, she she comes in as a Sith. And then we're gonna need to put ourselves in as cameos or something. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have to do that. Just guys at the cantina. <laughs> exactly. They're like, oh, that's like Boba Fett, mysterious, cool. Uh, all right, so I will close out there. Thank you guys for coming. 